Hello. You're probably wondering why you're here. And to tell you the truth, we're wondering why you're here. But we think we have an idea. And that idea is Star Trek. Yes, for the past two years plus, we've been watching Star Trek in release order for the very first time. We started with the very first broadcast episode of Star Trek, the original series, The Man Trap. And over seven seasons of the franchise and five movies later, we are now about to start season four of The Next Generation. All of those reactions and many discussions and all of that are available on our YouTube channel. But we realized recently that we never really made a video like this to explain why we're doing it, why we started, why we like doing it, and we figured now would be a good time as any to make this video, both for any new viewers that are coming in, if this is the first video you're seeing, or if you've watched us for a while and maybe we've made some comments here and there about what we like, but at the end of the day, you're like, these guys' preferences are confusing as hell. So we're going to talk about all of that in this video, but first... Alex, why don't you tell them about why we started watching Star Trek in the first place? Josh and I have been friends for years, and we're like, you know what, Josh? We watch a lot of things. We discuss it over text and stuff, but like, what if we just filmed us watching it and then talked about it? We're big fans of a certain YouTube channel, Red Letter Media, and I've seen videos of them discussing Star Trek The Next Generation and other various things. Yeah, at the time, we had just started our channel and we were reacting to mostly new release Marvel movie trailers, generic reaction channel, but we had done a few older series. If you dig into the archives on our channel, you can still find that. But when Alex brought the idea of Star Trek to me, I thought, wow, yeah, that is like one of the only franchises that neither of us have seen any of and is pretty massive. Let's give it a try. I know next to nothing. And we started with The Man Trap and... I'm thankful that that was the first episode because there were some that could have been the first that we would have just thought were fine. But The Man Trap, it's not the best episode of the franchise, but it really hooked us in. And I think the reasons for why we like that is probably why we like the episodes that we like. So I think we should dig into that a little bit. What did you like about The Man Trap? Just how it was not what I was expecting. Just on the surface level of TOS and the clips I've seen, it seems like very goofy, campy very 60s like the you know the batman show like that but when we realized when we watched it i thought at first it was like these oh 15 minute short little goofy episodes and the first episode was 50 minutes i'm like what and just how respectful of it was of his audience how surprising it was it just threw us into this situation with no real introductory stuff like this is this this is who this is this is what they do it just let us figure it figure it out um it was a mystery it was a mystery episode, like, what is this thing? What is the problem? One of the craziest reveals ever of a crazy practical mask. And it, it was just a roller coaster of stuff I didn't expect. Yeah, I think I'm on the same page as you for a lot of that. What really hooked me in was how it respected its audience and it felt vintage and retro but in a sci-fi way that I haven't experienced before and still haven't experienced with even other sci-fi series that we've tried to watch. There are things that are good about other ones, but with Star Trek, I felt like we had found something that was almost like, what if you took the Twilight Zone, but we're in space and you're with the same crew, but every week they have to deal with a sci-fi Twilight Zone-esque situation. And the show is not the Twilight Zone. There's a lot of differences. Mm -hmm. we, we both love the Twilight Zone. Star Trek is definitely different, but what I love about the sci-fi in Star Trek is that it can take so many familiar stories that I would know if you just had it on an Earth setting and go, we're going to take it into this futuristic space setting that I'm so unfamiliar with. You know, we're not sci-fi experts. We haven't seen really any sci-fi television outside of what we've watched on the channel. And maybe, you know, outside of Star Wars, not like a ton of sci-fi movies. And a lot of people wouldn't even say Star Wars is sci-fi. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. being novices in the whole genre means that we get to appreciate Star Trek a lot more in the ways that it shows us stuff we haven't seen in that setting. But with that being said, we aren't necessarily judging it on its sci-fi elements because we're not experts in that area. The things that I personally love to see in Star Trek are great acting performances, uh, great cinematography, great lighting, score, a lot of the technical elements that we both really enjoy as people who have watched a lot more movies than we have TV, I think, in our life. On the technical side is what we're nerds about. We're not nerds about phasers and spaceships and models. We're nerds about 
wow, how did they get that shot? How did they make that practical effect? Uh, th that's what I really love. How do they make me cry? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. As much as I appreciate, uh, you know, phasers, spaceships, and all that, and you strip all that away, it's basically a Shakespearean play set in the future. And yeah, telling these uh, modern stories, modern problems, but with a futuristic setting, you can do anything you want within, within budget, I guess. <laughs> uh, have as many aliens as you want. Dress up the story as crazy as you want. But underneath all that is like real human ethical problems that makes you go, oh, shoot. And if someone, you know, might be looking on one side of the fence, watches this from a completely unbiased uh, view because they don't know these people and all that, and then when you break it, oh, you know, this is a metaphor for this, they go, oh, shit. And they might look at themselves as, oh, I never thought of it like that. I think that's the neat part about this show. You look at episodes like This Side of Paradise or The Emissary, they're simple love stories or love stories that aren't meant to be. But it's about Vulcan and Klingons, fictional air alien races that don't exist. And their alien-specific traits are what complicate the being in love. Or you look at episodes like Court Martial, The Measure of a Man. Simple court dramas, but they're elevated because they're in this futuristic sci-fi setting. Measure of a Man being about whether an android has human rights or not. So, while I'm not going into the episode looking for the you know the typical sci-fi fan things that a lot of people point out to us and we go oh neat but like we don't really you know have a favorite model ship you know we don't have a favorite uh you know phaser model at least i don't um you know but we go holy crap that's so awesome that they took a trope that i'm aware of and made it really cool and different and something i haven't seen so i think our perspective is different in that way but I do think because of that, the difference between us watching it versus a sci-fi fan is that we bring that new perspective. That a lot of sci-fi fans, I think, enjoy getting to hear this other side. That comes with that, some tensions and some disconnects. So I think it'd be fun if we just answer some of the most common ones that uh, we've come across so far in Star Trek. One thing we don't care for a lot, unless it's done really well being ahead of the characters, knowing things that the characters don't. Oh yeah, it's uh, one of the biggest, most frustrating things. Now if it's something simple where like a character's walking down the hall and we see a, not in Star Trek specifically, but like the killer, we see the killer's perspective, but our character doesn't know, that's a different type of tension. But just something where like we know the problem right off the bat and we're trying to watch our crew figure it out on their own is pain state it just pulls out of the tension out of the room now if there was a problem that we have no idea what it is but we have uh like our tng crew around the table trying to figure it out that's the fun part that is like oh that's a good point too oh that's a good point because each character with their own personalities and backgrounds and information provide different stuff but if it's something we already know it's just it's, it's just it's more frustrating I like to feel like we are part of the crew. Yes. And when they're trying to figure it out, I want to be able to pretend that I'm sitting in the room with them. Who do I agree with? Whose perspective do I think is correct? And what do I want to do? If I was in the room and I already knew everything that was going on, I wouldn't be able to participate because I already know. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the biggest thing to me. There are examples where it can work. Um, and I think something like Allegiance, the TNG episode, where we know it's a fake Picard and no one else does, but we don't know why or we don't know the exact plan up front. We can know parts of the story, but as long as we don't know the entire thing and the whole plot isn't them figuring out what we know, we can usually get into it. Another big one, huge risks of the starship is going to blow up, the Enterprise is going to blow up, this alien race is going to kill Picard or kill Kirk. When the stakes are too high and we can't buy in that it's going to happen in this TV episode, it's hard for us to invest. Very hard. Uh, high stakes work in a movie, I guess, where you don't know, but even then, most movies have your good guy ending for the most part, but what really works is the stakes of a minor character dying or a, a guest character dying. And that leads to what we do really like is low stakes character drama episodes. Data has a kid. <laughs> Even though the, well, yeah, we know The what kid does die, yeah. yeah. The kid does die. Uh, <laughs> peak performance, for example, which towards the end introduces some stakes. But 
for the most part, is just Riker and Picard getting ready to simulate a battle against each other. It's not a real battle, nothing's going to happen, and we enjoy the whole thing. Meanwhile, there's a side story of Data being depressed over losing at a game, you know. It's small stuff, but what I find really impressive is when there are huge stakes and it can make me buy into it, like in something like The Enemy or The Defector in TNG, but what I find most impressive is making the stakes as low as possible and still making me care. If you can make me care about whether or not Picard is going to be able to, you know, outwit Troy's mom yet again, <laughs> you know, if you're able to make me care about this trivial matter, then I know the writing, the acting, and the way the episode is put together has been done really well. Because it's easy for a, a plot that has very low stakes to just dismiss or just think, oh, this episode isn't that good. But when it's still able to get you to invest, uh, I think that's what's most impressive to me. Um, but there are, of course, a lot of times where stakes can be fun. Stakes can really hit home. I think The Defector is a great example of that. Another thing to keep in mind is we love to absolutely deeply analyze and even to an extent tear apart episodes that we hate, like, and love. It doesn't matter how much we love or hate a particular episode, we love to jump in and say, how could they have done this scene better? How could they have written this moment better? How could this have been better directed? That's more of the filmmaking analytical side of what we really love, and there have been a lot of episodes that some people who aren't as familiar with our style will watch and say, wow, you guys really didn't like this one, when it's an episode we both enjoyed quite a bit. That's the fun part. I mean, Josh and I would text and talk about movies, TV shows for, for a long time, just breaking things down, what we liked, what we didn't like, and of course we're going to do that. I love uh, having my own headcanon, fan casting. Um, playing their role like if I was the filmmaker I'd say what would I do just that's what makes it fun absolutely and just keep in mind yes we do reactions to every single episode and we get that so if you're someone that just wants to watch us watch the show because you enjoy people watching the show we totally get that but once we start talking about the show just keep that in mind. The fact that we're criticizing or analyzing all of these different facts of the show doesn't mean we think the show's not good, or even that that particular episode's not good. I could take probably my favorite episode of every season of this franchise and pick it apart and, and think about what I would like to be different. That's just what we like to do. If that's not your thing, that's totally fine. There's a ton of different types of content within our channel. So find what works for you, and I hope you can enjoy if you're a Star Trek fan. Uh, but at the end of the day, The Wrath of Khan was just pretty good. <laughs> <laughs>
I think this just goes to show that there are things that, you know, we critique a lot. Uh, some people would even go as far as to say we nitpick a lot. Um, but I think that this is proof that even the stuff we harp on a lot or say that we really don't like, if done the right way, we'll really love.